Well hi for now folks and welcome to another Thankful Thursday video. When we did our survey a few weeks back, an overwhelming majority of you said that you wanted to know how to do cryptic crosswords. And well, I can kind of see why. First of all, this channel is all about gratitude, which is the great feeling you get when things are going right. And it's pretty similar to the feeling you get when you answer correctly a cryptic crossword clue. But secondly, there is a sort of mystery surrounding cryptic crosswords, partly I guess because of the name and the types of clue that you see, and also because, well, it's rumoured that in order to get into places like Bletchley Park you had to do the Times cryptic crossword regularly. Well personally, I think one of the best ways to learn cryptic crosswords is to do cryptic crosswords, and so that's what I'm going to invite you to do with me today. Now I asked Cottonpad to get me the paper with this puzzle when we were out shopping on Sunday. The reason I wanted a Sunday paper was because the answers to those clues come out at the end of the week. So if we got a paper last Sunday, then the answers wouldn't actually be available until the Sunday coming up. So you'd be able to know the fact that this video gets uploaded on Thursday, that there's absolutely no way I could have had the answers in front of me. The paper that she got me is the Hertfordshire Mercury, which is a weekly paper that comes out on Thursdays. So, sorry folks, you're just gonna have to trust that I didn't buy the next week's paper to cheat. But if it helps you trust me, then let me tell you the reason I do cryptics. It's because I think they're the kind of puzzle that really helps improve your vocabulary and your general knowledge, because you can work out the answers to a puzzle even if you don't know the answers. Now I realize that sounds confusing, but it will all make sense when we start, because you see, cryptic crossword clues have a clue to the answer, and a cryptic clue to the answer. And you actually only need one of those to find the answer. Sometimes it might be the cryptic clue that helps you the most, and you'll end up with a word that you didn't even know existed. Then you'll look for it on the internet and you'll learn something. Because of this, I don't personally think it's cheating if you have a few tools with you when you're doing cryptic crosswords. One of the tools I use is the Chambers Crossword Dictionary, which is kind of like a thesaurus, except it lists words in length order. The reason I use that one is because it's an app on my phone, it means I can take it everywhere. Another great tool that you can have on your phone is WordWeb, which is a fantastic dictionary tool as well, because you can actually search for words leaving blanks out. Like I say, I'm happy using tools like that because, well, doing a cryptic crossword is a little bit like solving a mystery, so you should have tools to help you research. What I try and shy away from, though, are tools that basically solve the puzzle for you, like anagram finders, where you just put in all of the letters and it tells you all of the possible anagram solutions. It answers the crossword for you. Whereas if you put the effort into actually solving the question, it doesn't matter how you did it, whether you looked on the internet or looked on Wikipedia or whatever, you still made the effort to get to that answer. So I think you can still feel pretty good about yourself. And let's face it, to solve some of the cryptics that they put in broadsheets and some of the unusual words they use, you'd have to be way better at cryptics than I am to solve them without a dictionary. So I've listed all of the clues in this puzzle down below in the order that we look at them. So uh, let's get started, shall we? Now, as I said, cryptic clues come in two parts. They normally come in two parts. A definition clue, like your normal crossword clue, and the cryptic clue. The reason why they look a bit mysterious is because the clue setters try and be clever and find interesting ways to mix the definition in with the cryptic clue. That's the bit that makes these puzzles so much fun. As well as those two parts of the clue, there is usually a third part that actually is an indicator. It's an indicator to the type of cryptography that the clue setter has used. One of the easiest ways to explain this is with an anagram clue, because an anagram clue usually has a word in it that lets you know you're looking for an anagram. So I'm quickly gonna see if I can find one of those here. Okay, well, looking straight down at the page, um, I see two down. Now, reform makes me suspect that this is an anagram, and the other clue is that, well, it's six letters, and there are six letters in a vital. And this is what I mean about it helping your general knowledge, because if you mix up the letters in a vital, it gives you Latvia. I can see that pretty easily. I wouldn't have immediately known that Latvia was a Baltic country, because my geography is terrible. But I can't imagine that answer being anything else, so I'm going to put that one in right away. Straight above that, I can see round off spoken language, and off is another clue that we could have an anagram here, because when something's off, it can be just like wrong. However, it can't be an anagram because next to off you have the words round and spoken, um, neither of which 
are seven letters. But then, that's one of the great things about cryptics. The same word can mean many different things, and part of the fun is in trying to work out exactly what the setter has had a go at doing here. Now, um, words like round can indicate particular letters. Um, round gives you O, because O is a circle. It's round. Spoken can mean it sounds like something, so it could be that this is a word meaning um, round off um, that sounds a bit like a language. Finnish, for example. In fact, probably is Finnish, isn't it, really? Because, I mean, Finnish, as in rounding off something, is six letters, but Finnish the language is seven letters. So, yeah, I'm gonna bet that one is probably right. So there we go, the first two minutes, and we've already got two answers just using the cryptic anagram and the sound-alike clue. If we had just had the clue language and just had the clue Baltic country, it really could have been anything. The cryptic part helped us to get those answers. Once you've got answers, of course, you've got letters. And like any crossword, having other letters helps you to get the words. So looking at 21 down, um, I know that's going to be an unusual word because it ends in I. Okay, now I don't know many islands ending in I. Fiji immediately comes to mind, but again, that doesn't fit with the cryptic side of things because I can't look at serving some Cuba Libras and see any way you could get the word Fiji from that. Uh, so then I start actually looking at that cryptic part. Um, I should point out I am assuming that serving some Cuba Libras is the cryptic part of this of course, um, mainly because Libras means book I think, and I know at least one island with the last letter I, whereas I know no words meaning books that are four letters with the last letter I. So yeah, I'm going to go with that half of it being the cryptic part, and if so, I need to look at uh, this particular part of the clue and see if there's anything there that could give me an island. Uh, this is one of my favourite types of clue. Well, I'd, I'd call it a word within a word clue, um, or word within words clue. Because if you have a look at the letter I, which we know because we've solved clue 25 across, that's at the end of the four letters B-A-L-I. And Bali is an island. Now the indicator there was the word serving. I have never seen that word used as an indicator of word within words clue before, but now that I have got it, it kind of makes sense, because what these words are doing is they are serving me the answer. It's actually right there, in the exact combination that I need. Which again is the great thing about cryptic crosswords, because once you've solved them, you know that you've solved them. Nine times out of ten. Eight times out of more than 5 out of 10. You know that you've solved a cryptic answer when you've got a cryptic answer. Now, of course, I know that Bali is an island because I've been there. But if you didn't, one of the things that you could do is go to your crossword dictionary, type in the word island, and have a look for islands that are four letters. And, well, because it's B, I suppose, the first one that comes up is Bali. So you could then have a look back down at your clue to see if there's any way you could get Bali out of some Cuba Libras, you'd hopefully see exactly what I just saw and think, Bob's your uncle. So A across begins with A. That makes me think Austin first because it's six letters beginning with A and, well, I know Jane Austen. I also know that gold can be represented by the letters AU, which is, I think, the chemical name for gold. Um, that's just one of the things that cryptic crossword setters use a heck of a lot. And of course, Austin also begins with AU. I'm not entirely sure at the moment how you would get Stin from To God, and checking the crossword dictionary entry for God, I can't see it there either. So I'm going to put it in very faintly and see if I get any other clues that will confirm it for me. 17 down. Now the fact that we know it ends with an S means that we're probably looking for a plural and since the first part of this clue says tear jerkers that suggests it's going to be the definition because that's also a plural. Reorganisation could be an anagram, and it would most likely be an anagram of in soon, because there we have our six letters all in a row. And if Austin is right, then the fourth letter is I. Nonios? 
Does does that make sense to you? Onios, Unins, Unins. No. Okay. I can't see any of those making sense. So for the time being, I'm gonna leave that one alone. 15 down. Now I'll admit, I don't know much about football, so if the clue is football team, I'm going to really, really struggle with this one. So I'm really gonna hope that the cryptic part is always a heavyweight. And I do hear talk in the pub, I have heard the name Everton associated with football, and that makes me think that this is probably gonna be what I think of as a substitution clue. Basically what that means is that words are substitute for other things like um, substituting round for O like we said earlier. Here I reckon always, that means ever, and a heavy weight is a ton, and if you put ever next to ton then you have Everton. You'll notice that there weren't any indicators there, and actually the lack of indicators is sometimes an indicator itself. In this case, it's an indicator that it's a substitution clue. Of course, that completely wrecks the likelihood of 23 across being Austin. Although, actually, it does help because now the third letter there is T, and I know my Norse mythology much better than I know football teams. I know that Thor is a Norse god, and if you put AU for gold next to Thor, you get author. So the clever guy was making me think of the name of a writer and actually just meant another word for writer. Actually I'd say guy, that's really nastily assumptive of me. It could easily be a female setter. I know that there are females who set cryptic crosswords, so sorry womankind. Like I said though, I have rubbish knowledge of football, can I be excused? Let's go back to 17 down. We now know that the fourth letter is actually O. Does that change the anagrams we can make out of in soon? Oinons, Oinois. None of that is making sense to me, so I'm going to come back to that one later too. Now, 14 across looks like it's going to be an anagram because it's got the word disarray there, and that suggests to me, you know, muddling things up. We've also got deacons in next to that word, which is the convenient nine letters that we need for the answer. If the definition is when made a saint, that could give us the name of a saint, or it could be the process of making a saint. In which case it would be past tense, and most words in past tense end with ed. Are you keeping up with me? The reason I say that is because working out the tense of your definition can be a, one of the first ways of working out which side is the definition and which side is the cryptic. Um, and here, if the definition is in the past tense, then Having ED gives us two of the letters in our anagram clue straight away. That leaves us with the letters A, C, O, N, S, I, N, and from my knowledge of all things church, the word canon um, is coming out there for me, so it might well be canonized. All of those fit. I've actually um, had a go at doing these anagrams on the side of the paper before I put them in, uh, which I'd always recommend. Canonized isn't the first word that would come to my mind when I think of making a saint. I usually think of the word being beatified, but like, a, I do know it's a word, and so if it fits, I'm gonna stick it in. And that gives us another word that ends with an unusual letter. A rambling, again, is a word that could suggest an anagram, but that anagram would have to have the letter A in it, and, um, well, apart from woodland, there isn't one that's got the letter A, and woodland is eight letters, and we need seven. So in this one, I'm gonna use the technique that we used in the barley one earlier. I'm going to imagine that it might be a word within words clue. We do have the word in there, which could be an indicator. If I find the letter A in rambling and work backwards, um, that gives Andorra. Even though I know that's a country, I wouldn't necessarily have known that you spell it with two R's, so, once again, there the cryptic helped me to get exactly the right answer. Another geography clue that was answered with word within words. Could that be part of this setter's style, I wonder? Sometimes you can pick up on that. Particular crossword setters do have particular styles. They might favour anagrams more, or word within words more, or substitutions more, that kind of thing. Sometimes it can be useful to work that out. This paper doesn't actually tell you who set the crossword. That's 
Shame on you, Harper Jim Mercury. You should give credit where credit's due. Okay, now we have quite a few letters for uh, 1, 9 and 11 across. And when you see words together like first and class, they can be trying to point you to particular letters. It could be trying to tell you that the letter C is important because that is the first letter of the word class. Um, similarly for headdress, it could be the letter D because you've got the word head there. But looking at that headdress, actually, I can think of a headdress that fits. We've got I as the second and R as the fourth, so tiara would fit in there. Having that suspicion, what I now do is I have a look at the cryptic and I see if I can get tiara from the cryptic. Backing art could be telling me to turn the word art around. Again, that's kind of like a point of clue. It's telling us to take the letters that we've got and just put them in a different order. That, of course, gives us T-R-A, which are three of the letters of Tiara. We would just need to put I and A in there. Another thing that first can mean is the number one, which in Roman numerals is an I. That's used a lot in crossword clues. Knowing those sorts of very common substitutions is something that really just comes with practice. That leaves me with the letter A. And I don't know whether you could get A from the word class at all. Well, it fits, it's a headdress, most of the cryptic part has given me the letters I need, so where that A came from, I have no idea, but I'm guessing that's definitely going to be the right answer. Nine across, recording here makes me think of studio, and again that's a word that fits with those letters. I then look at the other half of the clue. Card game could be stud poker, that's the first four letters of our studio. That leaves us with I-O. No, I really can't work out how you would get I-O from ten. So even though I'm pretty convinced by now it probably is going to be studio because of the stud thing, this is one of those occasions where I check the crossword dictionary just to see if I can figure it out. And of course, I, O, when next to each other look just like the number 10. So that is definitely studio. And one across. Again, the word back could be an indicator that we need to switch some letters around, but because we know we've definitely got an L in there and there isn't an L in the clue, I'm guessing that's not going to be a reversal indicator or an anagram. So what could it be? I can't think right now. The pressure's too intense. I'm going to have a look at four down and see if I can get more letters. Now, deity, of course, means God. So it could be a word that means God or it could be a God. I don't know any words for painful back that have O as a third letter. Now back again could be an indicator that we need to take some letters and put them the other way around, but it's probably not going to be that because the only four letter word there is with and well that would make a till. Uh, there's nothing for it but you need to think Chip, you need to think of deities with four letters and a third letter O. Again I wouldn't blame you if you went on the internet for this one but I'm Probably going to go with Eros, that's the Roman deity for love, known as Cupid more commonly. And I think Eros is the answer, because if you reverse the letters of Eros, then you have Saw. So there was me saying that this wasn't a reversal clue, but in actual fact, it is. It's a reversal and a substitution clue. First of all, you need to take that word painful and substitute it for Saw, and then you need to turn Saw around. To give you Eros. That is the feeling of elation that I was talking about right at the beginning. It's when you get a clue like that that you feel really happy. And of course, the setter, male, female, whoever they are, that is a damn good clue. Because it makes a grammatically perfect sentence and it has everything in there. It has the indicator, it has the cryptic, and it has the definition. Guys, this is why you should do cryptic crosswords. If you didn't know who Eros was as well, you'd have just expanded your general knowledge. So, so many reasons to do cryptic crosswords in that one clue. I'm still no closer with one across. So this is a good time when WordWeb is a good app to use because you've only got a few letters that could be anything. So if I put in blank L, blank A, blank E, it still comes up with 45 matches. So let's see, there are quite a few things here. I have no idea what Al Hazen is. So I'm gonna check if it's an ocean because that could be our answer. It's an Egyptian polymath, born in Iraq. I didn't know that. Now one word here that does kind of make sense is floater. It fits, and 
amongst the definitions, apart from the obvious, you know, something that floats on water, um, it's an employee who is reassigned from job to job as needed, a voter who votes illegally at different polling places in the same election. Both of those sorts of definitions could mean someone who has other names. If that's the case, then what we have here is an example of a double definition clue, one where you actually have two completely definitions, one of which is perhaps closer to what you'd expect the answer to be and the other one which is a little bit more obscure. I can't see anything else here in that list which would fit either side of this clue, no matter which one is the definition. That one comes close to fitting both, so I'm just going to stick it in and we'll find out later in the week if I was right. So the next one I really want to do is 13 down because that will give me more letters for other clues. So you probably realise by now one of the first things that you do is you have a look and try and work out which one's going to be the definition, which one's going to be the cryptic. Sometimes there's just no way of knowing, so you just have to guess. This time I'm going to start by guessing that eat away is the definition. No reason for that other than centre is perhaps a strange word to have as a definition. And quite often you'll find that setters will give you definitions made up of more than one word just because it's harder to look them up in a thesaurus or a crossword dictionary. I don't see any indicators here that this is an anagram or a word in words clue, um, which means there's probably some substitution involved. Having said that, I do see the word in. That could mean that it's a word in words, but it probably isn't because that would leave us with quite a lot of superfluous words, like it's either going to be in at metal bar or in the center. You wouldn't be able to have it in both of those because the word in is between them. Overall, crossword setters are kind of fair. You're either going to have one half of the clue which is cryptic over here and the indicator next to it to explain what it's doing and then the definition or you know, any combination of those, but what you wouldn't usually have is the indicator slap bang in the middle of what it's trying to indicate for you. But the word in can indicate something else. It can mean that you are putting a substitution into another substitution. For example, here it could be a word that means uh, metal bar, which you have to put into another word that means center. Now I can immediately think of words like rod and pole for metal bar, which are nice short words, so they could easily fit inside another word. So now all I need is a word meaning center that those words could fit inside. If we pretend it's rod, that gives us a four letter word for center. Of course the first one that comes to mind is mid, which would go with pole, but the O is the second letter here. Well, if it's going to be inside, the word meaning center, then the O has to be a little bit further down. That means that O is probably the second letter of the word meaning center, like core, for instance. Core, the center of the earth. And if you have the word rod put in the word core, what you get is a word that means eat away. If I look smug there, I'm sorry, but that's what happens when you solve cryptic crossword clues. You just feel so clever. When in actual fact, you're just a leech because the clever person really is the person who set the damn good clue. In fact, to set clues this good, you probably do need to have the kind of really clever lateral mind that women have. Yeah, I bet this was written by a woman. Now, I was about to look at 18 across, but I've been distracted by 16 down. You look at the exclamation mark and you might think, what does that mean? Generally, punctuation is a good indicator that this is a fun kind of clue. Straight away, I, I got the answer to this one because, of course, another word for crikey, if you've ever seen Danger Mouse, is crumbs. Um, and what are crumbs? They are small pieces of bread. That one is kind of fun. I'm going to put that one straight in. Okay, back to 18 across then. Now, before we put crumbs in, I'd been expecting that to be something like tailors, because I know that tailor means fabric seller and it would fit. But of course, that doesn't fit now because there's an R as a second letter. In order to try and help, I'm going to see what 19 down is. Variety, of course, is another anagram indicator. Basically, any word that means that things can be different or changed or mixed up or somehow off, that's going to be an anagram indicator. But remember always to have a look for the letters that you've got. If you can count them up and it gives you the right number of letters, then that's even more chance it's going to be an anagram. Here, of course, Pearl has five letters and a variety of Pearl, or an anagram of Pearl, is 
paler, which means whiter. That still hasn't helped me with 18 across though, in fact if anything it's made it trickier because... Oh, well no, hold on. A draper? Is that someone who sells clothes? Okay, so once again, turning to my tools just to research, this is all part of getting the answer. Um, again, I don't see this as cheating in cryptic crosswords, it's part of the learning curve. Uh, the dictionary does tell me that a draper is a dealer in fabrics and sewing materials, but I'm still not too happy putting it in because I can't really work out how to get that from spread out around river. Oh, hold on, yes I can. because. Out is another anagram indicator, and we've got spread there. And of course, this is a really good example of how the rules can always be bent, which I know doesn't help beginners very much, but here we've got the word spread, and that's only six letters. But it does also say it's round river. Now, river is one of those words that if you do cryptic crosswords often, you will come to realize can just be shortened to one letter, which is R. I don't know exactly why that is, maybe it's because of some old um, map terminology or something, I don't know. But of course if you imagine that it is just one letter and you add that to the six letters you've got in spread, then you do have all the letters that create the anagram of drapers. Anagrams can involve substitution as well. That's a much more tricky one, but again we got there by finding the definition first and then seeing something in the cryptic side that backed it up, just like solving. Mystery. 22 across. Now I know that a synonym of beam is smile and because this word ends in D that suggests it's going to be past tense. Beamed is here in past tense which means that's probably going to be the definition. All the other letters are there so it's probably going to be smiled. But let's have a look at the cryptic side just to check everything. It makes sense straight away. Northern transport, something used to get around the Arctic, is a sled. That's four of our letters. The motorway, if we take the M1 and we use exactly the same methodology that they gave us for 10 earlier when we were looking at the answer studio, that's going to be an M and an I, isn't it? So in it goes. So we only have one more clue to do to complete yet another corner of this crossword. I think that's bending the rules again, because remember how earlier I said that you tend to have the indicator right next to the cryptic part? Well, here I would argue that actually the definition has come in between the cryptic part and the indicator. One way of seizing power is to usurp, that's something that fits in those gaps. That definition is in the middle, which is really, really unusual. The word internally gives us the indicator for a word within words, and if you look at you surprisingly, the five letters of usurp are right there. Yeah. I think this set is a little bit naughty sometimes. Maybe she is a he after all. Now you probably have noticed that I've been avoiding the bottom right hand corner of the crossword for a while because I just could not get that tear jerkers in soon for reorganisation clue. There is 20 across which cuts across it. When you see words like France you don't necessarily need to know any French. It can sometimes again be one of those substitution things. I say you don't need to know any French, maybe a little French would help. So words like le and on uh, or pa pretty much is all the French I know actually. That and hasta la vista baby. If this word started with le then we would be looking for another three letters that we can make from John which would give us a word meaning small trousers. Le jaw. The thing is it could be le jaw, it could even be si jaw because that would be a, a word within words clue um, indicated by the word in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look on WordWeb and see if I'm about to expand my general knowledge by discovering a new type of short trousers I wasn't aware of. Um, and kind of unsurprisingly neither of those are a kind of short trousers. The only thing I can think of that fits is jeans, which of course are a kind of trousers. I think it sort of works because jean is the French way of saying John. I think that's right. I think that's a point we can take from Les Miserables. And just like with R for river, small can sometimes just be reduced to a single letter. It's one of those 
cheeky substitutions again. In which case, we would get genes. Now it's important to point out here that there's a comma there. Just ignore it. Pretty much all of the punctuation that you see in cryptic crosswords is to be ignored. Even that exclamation mark that we mentioned earlier, yeah, it let you know that it was fun, but it didn't actually help us to do the clue at all. I'm gonna stick in genes, and I'm gonna hope that that will help me with 17 down. And of course it does. Because now when I see that N is definitely the second letter, I think, what vegetable brings tears to your eyes? An anagram of in soon. Okay, so we've got one corner of this crossword left. I'm going to start with eight down, because that's the only one of these clues that I have a letter for. It's actually one of those clues that are two words, so we've got five, then two. If making an entrance was the definition, then the second word would be in. Portion of suggests to me that this is going to be another one of those word in words clues because we take a portion of the words which should mean if we look closely enough all of the letters that we need for this clue are right there in order somewhere in the words mango in ginger. Knowing that we're looking for the word in which is there in ginger you go five letters back to get going in which is exactly what this clue is doing. Right, that gives us O as the first letter of 10 across. Now the fact that it has the words but not with in it suggests to me that the definition is not gonna be starter for the simple reason that but not with is a very common indicator that you need to lose some letters. And starter is actually another common indicator that points to particular letters, like first and head earlier. Starter suggests that we need to look at the first letter or so in a word. What I imagine we're looking for is a type of pasta where if we take the first letter or letters away, um, we're left with a word meaning lots and of course it's not too difficult because there is that expression oodles of noodles so i think we'll stick that in 12 across has the second letter n now when a clue mentions points that can mean the points of a compass like n s w and e and the word beforehand could be telling us to make sure that we put whatever compass points that we need before a word meaning vulgar. Now the only points of a compass that make sense together at the beginning of this word would be S and N for sn something, or E and N for N something. I can't immediately think of a word meaning preoccupy that begins with sn or N, so I'm going to come back to that one later. We have a letter in six down which is D. And sometimes D can just be a short way of saying daughter. It's another one of those cheeky common substitutions that setters like to use. Sometimes though, daughter can actually mean a girl's name. And if it does, then you got a heck of a lot of names to choose from. Although because this is only a five letter word, it would be a pretty short name. So that would hopefully narrow the list somewhat. But of course, Daughter is right at the start here, so it could be a five letter girl's name and that could be the entire clue. Included in could indicate that we need to have the letter D inside the word tour or a word meaning tour. Okay, a quick check of the internet, again, research, not cheating, tells me that tour is not a royal house, so that can't be the answer. So at this point I'm gonna bring out the crossword dictionary and put in the word house. We could be looking at the word lodge, but that would leave us with the letters L-O-G-E. So now I swap to WordWeb and have a look to see if L-O-G-E means anything. Turns out it does, like a, a royal box. Well, we do have the word royal in the clue here, but I'm still not entirely sure about that one. So once again, just like I did with Austin earlier, I'm going to pencil this one in very faintly. And I was wrong about Austin earlier, so I'm probably gonna be wrong about this one too. Well, it's not a complete loss, cause we've got a letter for seven down as well. E, the third letter. The definition could be stop, it could be fold. If the definition is stop, then the cryptic that we'd be left with would be right in the fold. And in the could be an indication that something meaning right is in the word fold. 
um, or a word meaning fold if we're going to do the substitution thing. Right is another one of those cheeky words which can just be substituted with the letter R, um, but if that was the case it couldn't go into the word fold because that's only four letters and we need a total of six. I can't think of any five letter words meaning fold. I could check the crossword dictionary but there is a six letter word for fold which is crease and crease would actually fit with E as the third letter so I'm going to stop there for a moment and imagine that fold is actually our definition and look at what that leaves us with for the cryptic part. So remember what we said earlier it generally goes cryptic part indicator definition or definition indicator cryptic part but the indicator and the cryptic part don't necessarily need to be next to each other in a way that makes grammatical sense. I'll explain what I mean. Here, right in the fold makes grammatical sense to put the letter R into a word meaning fold. But stop right in could also be a way of saying put right, or the letter R, into a word meaning stop. How does that help us here? Well, a word meaning stop is cease. And if you put the letter R in that, you get that six other word that I was talking about earlier for fold. Okay, that gives me an extra letter for my 12 across. I'm still really struggling to think of a word meaning preoccupy that starts with EN or SN. My brain's just gone dead. So I'm going to have a go at using WordWeb again. This is another one of the reasons why I don't consider this cheating, because of course we don't actually have all of the letters here. The first letter is coming purely out of my assumption that we're going to either begin with an S or begin with an E. And that, of course, comes from the cryptic side of this clue, the points beforehand. I'm going to have a go at imagining that it's an E first. 13 matches, so a nice easy list to peruse. Obviously, and gross. Gross in the sense of vulgar, not 144. N gross to preoccupy. And as we expect, that means that six down definitely can't be lodge. So I'm now going to have a look at five across and see what I can do about that without an L. It's another fold. It's probably not going to be crease this time. It could be a word meaning joined together, but my suspicion that it's probably some kind of word meaning fold comes from the fact that, once again, I'm looking at the tense and, well, joined together is past tense. We don't have a space for an ED at the end of this word. There are plenty of past tense words out there that don't end in ED, of course, but, well, that doesn't make life particularly easy. So I'm going to have another look at six down and see if we can finish this one off. Well, now that we know that it's definitely not lodge and it definitely ends with an R, I'm even more flummoxed. Time to look at WordWeb again. Now, I was expecting there to be loads of different five-letter words with the third letter D and the last letter R, but apparently there were only 34, so this should be easy. Of course, right towards the bottom of the list, what do we have? But Tudor, which is a royal house. And that is another great example of how indicators can actually mean a bunch of different things. The word round can mean the letter O, that circle, like we mentioned earlier. It can also be another way of saying you need to put the letters backwards, as in, you know, round, back to front. But it can also be an anagram indicator. You just need to mix things around. That's clearly what's gone on here. You take the word to and mix them up into T-U-O-R and then put the letter D in the middle of that and you get Tudor. Another great example of how the cryptic side of the clue helps you to confirm the definition of the clue. So that just leaves us with five across. Um, something T, something C, something. When I think of joining things together, or things that are joined together, um, one word that obviously comes to mind to fit in there is stuck. So let's have a look at that cryptic side of things and see if that works. We know from earlier that small can just be the letter S. If we had that right at the start here, then we would be looking for four letters meaning fold, starting with T and with a C as the third letter. I think it's pretty obviously stuck. Well, there you are, folks. One solved cryptic crossword. I hope this has given you a good idea for how to do these crosswords, exactly what kind of things you're looking for. It does take practice. 
it does get better with practice and I'd certainly recommend having those tools to help you. Maybe next time I'll have a go at a more tricky one, but uh, I have to admit there were some clues in here that really had me stumped for a while, but I guess the biggest mystery is about the setter. Were they male or female? Well, maybe if I was cut out for Bletchley Park, I'd know the answer to that. Because we don't actually know if I've completed it correctly because we don't have the answers here. So make sure you're subscribed to the Gradicast and when we pick up the edition with the correct answers, I'll be able to release a video comparing them to the answers that I just gave you. Also, if you're subscribed, you'll be able to see the fun videos that we release every thankful Thursday and the vlog that we release every Sunday. And just by watching those videos, you're helping us raise money to fight the debilitating disease of ME. Because every bit of ad revenue that YouTube sends us for the watches you give, we pass on straight to them. So please also share this video around because that'll raise even more money for those charities. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Stay thankful. And ciao for now.